Okay, so now let's look at a fully detailed logic model. We've looked at all the simple elements that go into a full logic model, and now this is what a fully developed logic model would look like. The situation analysis is what you've already been working on, and you have identified the priorities in terms of what the problem is and where we need to work on. And you've probably already thought about what is the ultimate impact or long-term uh, output that you, or outcome that you would like to obtain in your program. So as we are looking at a, a full logic model, let's make one important note. In order to save yourself a great deal of frustration while you're developing your logic model, remember to think of this as an iterative process. You certainly don't come up with a logic model and have a fully formed logic model and make no changes as you fully develop your program. You will continually be making changes and coming back to this model and further perfecting it in order for the logic of your theory of change for your particular program to become clear. So your first draft of your logic model may look very different from your final model and that's okay. It simply means that you have effectively used this tool to force you to critically think through all of the steps that are necessary to get from the situation as it is to the outcome that you desire. And if you use this as an effective tool that will help to minimize the amount of miracles that you will need to have the desired outcome in your program. So there are two things that we have not looked at yet in the logic model and those are assumptions and external factors. Oftentimes we forget to think about these things because we are so excited about our program and we assume that we have designed such a great program that it's going to lead to really fabulous results. But what we often forget is that no program happens in a vacuum and so there are very important assumptions that we make when we are designing the program as well as external factors exterior to our program that affect how successful or unsuccessful the program might be. So what are assumptions? Assumptions are the beliefs or principles or ideas that we have about our program, about the people who are involved in our program and the way we think our program will operate. In fact, everything we do in life uh, assumes certain facts. For example, when we take a carton of milk, we assume that this milk has been processed correctly, that we are not going to get some kind of food illness from the milk because it has gone through all the necessary processes to become uh, good for human consumption. So when we look at that carton of milk, we automatically make these assumptions. And the same thing in our program design. We often assume that uh, community coalitions are going to be effective partners for us to work with. We assume that our funding will be adequate and it will arrive as needed. We assume that our participants will want to participate in our activities, they will want to learn, they will want to change their behaviors. And if we forget to make explicit these assumptions, sometimes programs can be unsuccessful because we've forgotten something very important or assumed something that wasn't actually the case. And finally, we need to also look at external factors. External factors are anything that affects or is affected by our program. So in other words, the program environment. They can be attitudes, society changes, they can be government policy, they can be economic shifts, any factor that can influence how successful or unsuccessful our program is going to be. Thinking about some of these external factors in advance and specifying them will help us to improve uh, the logic or the change theory that we use to develop our program and allow us to design a more effective program. So here's to finish up is an example of a complex intervention design. Up to this point we've been talking about very simple kind of one path uh, get to our outcome ideas. 
But however, a program is usually more complex. Usually we are training community members. We also may have to deal with policy changes. We also may have to deal with individual behaviors. And so a logic model can become a bit more complex. And you can see that from this example of a community nutrition education program. And if you look, they have, they have organized their intervention based on individual and household level activities and participation, community and institution level, as well as social structures and policies. And so you want to start thinking about that as you look at your intervention and the outcome that you desire. What are the major stakeholders and the people who will have to participate in order for the desired change to come about? So this is an example of a more complex logic model. And one thing you will notice on this is the arrows. So don't forget the arrows in your logic model. Arrows are very important because it helps the person who is looking at your logic model to understand the if-then relationships that you have laid out. It also helps you to make sure that it's a logical sequence of events to go from this activity with these participants to these desired outcomes. So it makes your program logic more visible and clear. So thank you for listening. I hope that uh, you found this helpful and please feel free to go back and review and to write down your questions and bring them to class because in class we are going to walk through this process step by step and our short term outcome is we hope that you will feel confident by the end of class tomorrow that you can build a really fabulous logic model. So happy logic modeling. See you tomorrow.